Hey there, I'm Tim Warner, host of the Inform IT Certification Reference Guide, and thanks for joining me on this on-certification screencast. This episode is entitled Test Taking Skills Clinic, Cisco CSENT, Exam 640-822. Our agenda for this screencast is to, well, one, I'll share with you a brief recipe for IT certification exam success. Two, I'll introduce our source text from which I've pulled two practice questions. We're going to look at those questions with an analytical eye, with a bent toward test-taking skills. We're not looking at the content so much as just critical thinking, test-taking skills to get you through those items as quickly and neatly and accurately as possible. And we'll finish by giving you my contact information in case you want to reach me directly. If you want to pass your certification exams, it's more than just knowing the subject matter, friends. It really is. The first two bullet points here deal with the subject matter. Of course, you have to know the subject theory, just the actual facts, the nuts and bolts, a lot of memorization, a lot of vocabulary terms. With CSENT, we're talking about stuff like IP addressing and subnetting rules and all that good stuff, binary to decimal, decimal, hexadecimal, etc. And then there's definitely, even more so with Cisco technologies than with other vendors, a practical aspect understanding the Cisco Internetwork operating system and navigating it. But the second two bullet points are even more important in some ways, possessing a basic familiarity with computer-based testing and understanding how it works, and test-taking skills, which equates to strategy, how to approach multiple-choice questions with a discerning eye. That's what this test-taking skills clinic series of screencasts is really all about. Our source text today is the CSENT Exam Cram, Exam 640-822, published December 2607, and authored by Mike Valentine and Andrew Whitaker. Book is available either as a physical product, or you can read it electronically if you're a Safari Books Online member. I know one of the two authors, Andrew Whitaker. As you see here, he's got a string of certifications after his name. Both of these guys, Mike and Andrew, are expert instructors, expert Cisco professionals. Andrew, in particular, has worked with me on the CSENT Network Simulator product. Definitely check that out if you haven't already. Speaking of the theory and practice, you've got a great combination in terms of purchasing the CSENT book to give you your theoretical understanding, your test-taking skills, and purchasing the CSENT Network Simulator to give you your practical skills with the Cisco IOS. And again, I've said it before, I'll say it again. One thing I love about our exam cram authors is that they're professional trainers and teachers just as much as they're propeller head nerds like I am. Now, without any further ado, let's get to it. Practice question one. This is a question that most people fear, subnetting. And different instructors have different takes on this. Due to time limitations, we don't have a whole lot of time to really over-explain this. I'm giving you this item just to give you fair warning. In any Cisco career certification exam, it's understood you know subnetting. The way I'm going to review the answer is hopefully helpful to you. It's definitely not a cheater way to answer the question. I use cheater with quotes, with air quotes. But some instructors I know kind of give a really handy, quick, shortcut method of answering these questions, which is nice when you're in a time crunch, but sometimes robs the student of the ability to understand. Anyway, enough explaining. This question says you need to assign an IP address on a router for a new Ethernet network. That's our problem statement. You need to assign the router to the first IP address on the second usable subnet. Got it? The second subnet, not the first, the second usable subnet taken from the major Class C network of 192.168.25/24. Here's a more detail. The subnet must support at least 13 hosts on each net, and we have to allow for as many nets as possible. And then here's some more knowledge. The router has been configured with IP subnet 0. Given these requirements, what address would you assign to the router? Hmm. Now again. How would you approach this? If you're really good at subnetting, you can do this item in your head. I've kind of brainstormed the solution here on this particular slide. 
If you're starting with the Class C block 192.168.25.0/24, you know you've got 8 bits left over for subnets and hosts. This item presumes you're using subnet 0, and it tells you that kind of sideways, doesn't it? It tells you that you're configuring the router with IP subnet 0. So it's assumed that we can use subnet 0 and subnet 1. It also tells us we need at least 13 hosts per net. We know our formula to calculate subnet hosts is 2 to the n minus 2. So we need to figure out how many bits can we use from that last octet, those last 8 bits, that would give us at least 13 hosts per net. Well, that magic number is 4, because 2 to the 4 minus 2 gives us 14 hosts per net. Therefore, we need to reserve 4 bits from that last octet for hosts and 4 bits for subnets. Quickly getting your first subnet ID, I've taken the first 3 octets, put them in decimal. Just for visualization purposes, I've taken the last octet and I've converted it to binary. The first subnet, when we're using subnet 0, is all zeros, so the first subnet ID would be 192.168.25.0. The second subnet ID, which is what we're concerned with in this item, is 192.168.25, and then we set the low order bit to 1, and that would be 16, wouldn't it? So 192.168.25.16. So if we go back to our item, we have to look at these items, which one would fall as the first IP address on our second subnet. It wouldn't be the first one, that would be subnet 1. Let's look at the second one. This is the one that would fall. 192.168.25.17 would be the first usable IP address on the second subnet. Again, my explanation was kind of clunky and inelegant. It was just done kind of in my head, stream of consciousness but it was meant to just give you kind of a real-world practical example of what you can expect to see on your CSENT. Know that you're not going to have a calculator to save you on these Cisco exams. So you're either working with pen and paper or you're working with your head. One of the two. Next question here. Another common CSENT item. How many broadcast domains are shown in the following picture? Well, here you've got to know the difference between these different connectivity devices. These are just PCs. Those aren't connectivity devices. Those are hosts. We need to understand this guy here looks like a Linksys router. So let's assume that's a router. This guy looks like a switch or a hub. This guy up here looks like a switch or a hub. Let's just assume. Again, you've got to be careful with assumptions. On your real exam, it'll be much more apparent the difference between routers, switches, and hubs. But in this case, let's assume this guy's a router and these guys are switches. So you have to know the difference between a broadcast domain and a collision domain. Switches break up collision domains into as many ports as there are on the switch. Routers break up broadcast domains. So in this case, this router is creating how many broadcast domains? Two, right? Just one for each interface. So the correct answer is B. So this item was chosen, or I should say I chose this item, to let you know you're going to be expected to interpret a lot of network diagrams, some that require a little bit of a leap of faith, like here we have to really look closely at these pictures and make some speculation as to what those mean. And number two, you have to know some of the theory behind those. So there's some applied theory as well. Contact information. Timothy.Warner at Pearson.com is my contact email. Please feel free to reach me anytime you want with any questions you have. You can find me on the web at any of these URLs. I'm especially active at Twitter, twitter.com forward slash on certification. I'm always sharing what I hope are helpful links. Thanks a lot for joining me on this screencast and for taking the time to do so. Appreciate it.